Hi, I'm Patrick Hogan, author of How Authors' Minds Make Stories, available from Cambridge University Press. Uh, in a very kind uh, review of the book, R.M. Davis uh, wrote that this engaging and thoughtfully written account goes beyond traditional approaches of literary criticism, drawing on recent work on neurophysiology, uh, and so on. Um, Hogan makes a significant contribution to both cognitive and literary studies, sheds light on the uniquely human mental faculty of authors to entertain counterfactual situations and render them in well-crafted, descriptively precise words. The point of the book is to explore simulation, the well-established cognitive process uh, by which we come to imagine other people's minds, uh, counterfactual si uh, situations, thing, the way things could have been if, if uh, certain factors had changed, the way things might be in the future, hypothetical situations, and so on. It begins with uh, a discussion of the way in which Tagore's short story exercise book draws on his own experience as a child, but with a small parameter shift, changing the character from himself to a young girl, uh, he manages to completely alter the uh, trajectory of events, um, and quite plausibly. So he simulates his own situation, but transferred to a girl, and what happens with the girl? She doesn't become a Nobel Prize winning author because of the uh, social situation in which he's living. Um, Jonathan Culler says, Patrick Hogan's provocative discussion of the role of simulation in literary composition demystifies literary narration by relating it to familiar mechanisms of reasoning and simulation. More important, he makes explicit cognitive attempts at explanation. And I want to underline this because this sort of algorithmic step-by-step -step explanation is what is key in any sort of cognitive approach. And um, this is exactly what I've undertaken to do in this book, to set out rules or principles, complexes of principles that guide authorial uh, production uh, of simulation and thus their creation of works and, and parameters that vary that. Uh, my first two extended examples are Jane Austen and William Faulkner. In the case of William Faulkner, I'm treating uh, a passage in uh, The Sound and the Fury, and uh, I'm concerned with the way that F Faulkner's own mind worked in simulating the um, uh, development of events in one part of that novel. And uh, in the case of Jane Austen, I'm concerned with the way that Austen uh, presents us with characters simulating one another's uh, minds. Uh, so their own uh, simulative processes. So this, these are two different ways in which one can go about, one can analyze uh, uh, simulation, one can, in, in the case of literature. Uh, one implication of my account is that if um, simulation is a function of rules with parameters, these rules are idiolectal, as it's called. They're specific to authors. So this must mean, this implies that we're able, we should be able to isolate principles that govern um, uh, bodies of work by given authors. And uh, I make this argument in the case of Shakespeare that we can indeed isolate um, interesting and illuminating principles of his story generation. One uh, limitation of the discussion of Shakespeare is that uh, I don't, for various reasons, it's difficult to plot out a trajectory of change. For uh, a, a simpler canon, I take up uh, Jean Racine to argue that we can uh, not only have a synchronic understanding of these rules, but a diachronic understanding, an understanding of their development as well. Uh, from here I turn to um, issues in, uh, uh, other issues in the uh, creation of literary work, specifically political argumentation, though it could apply to our ethical argumentation or different sorts of argumentation, uh, taking uh, a work by Bertolt Brecht, um, The Measures Taken, and uh, the development of metaphor in the case of Kafka's Metamorphosis. Um, these are to illustrate different ways in which simulation and cognitive processes related to simulation can govern uh, other uh, contributing factors in the um, uh, creation of literary works. Um, 
Keith Oatley uh, kindly remarked that um, uh, Hogan reigned as cogently through examples from William, Shake William Shakespeare's Hamlet and Jane Austen's Emma to Franz Kafka's Metamorphosis. He ends with an afterward inspired by Italo Calvino of a kind you won't find in any other academic book. Um, the Hamlet reference is to the next chapter in which I discuss implotment, the ways in which story information is presented rather than the story uh, events themselves being defined. And I argue that there are uh, rule-based and um, parameter-governed patterns in implotment as well, using Hamlet as the example. The final chapter turns to narrators and narratees, and there I uh, imitate uh, narrators and narratees in the works I'm discussing, so I have a, uh, a little, um, a little uh, Faulkner example uh, with an imitation of Faulkner and then a little um, uh, Calvino example with an imitation of Calvino's narration, so I'll just read you one sentence from each. It's not that the artifice is forcing itself on our attention like the pimply-faced boy trying to woo the pretty girl at the spring dance. That's from the Faulkner section. And then I'll read a couple of sentences from the Calvino section. I'm afraid I have a confession to make. Perhaps you will be surprised to hear that I am not William Faulkner, nor a dead Southern professor from one of his novels. On second thought, that won't surprise you. I must botch the dialect here and there. Okay, more than here and there. Perhaps it's so bad that you found yourself holding your ears closed and saying, Good Lord, spare me this abomination and putrefaction of the English language. I am, of course, the big narrator here, the embedding and up-to-now non-personified narrator, and so on. So it plays with the um, self-referentiality of the uh, uh, Calvino-esque narrator, uh, but at the same time draws on... Uh, cognitive science, cognitive neuroscience, and uh, tries to articulate an account of simulation that will encompass these sorts of uh, narrational uh, techniques as well. So uh, there you have it, uh, a little taste of how authors' minds make stories, uh, named 2013, uh, named an outstanding academic title in 2013 by choice. Thank you very much.